Hey guys, thank you very much for joining again, even in this uh, mid-holiday time. Uh, when I was thinking about, because this, this will be the last live stream of 2021, so when I was thinking about the topic, uh, I wanted to do something related to the end of the year, you know, like everyone. Um, but then I realized that basically, because there every everyone basically makes some resolutions for the new year. Okay, what, what I will change and what I will do and what will be the next year about all this. Uh, but And many people decide to move to the Czech Republic uh, with the new year. So I was thinking about doing some topic about that. But then I realized that actually the whole, my whole social media is about moving to the Czech Republic. So instead of that, I decided to do something which is important as well. And that's what you should do if you're moving out of the Czech Republic. Because obviously for some people, the New Year's resolution will be to move to the Czech Republic. But for some other people, it will be moving out of the Czech Republic. And now, okay, I'm back on Facebook. Perfect. Uh, so for some people, the New Year's resolution will be moving out of the Czech Republic or just not the resolution, but just what, what happens. So I decided to do a topic about this and like what you need to do when you're moving out of the Czech Republic. So there are three main topics I would like to address, and that's visa-related topics, uh, depending on if your visa is expiring or not. Then daily life topics, what you need to do from the daily life perspective to, to be clear, and tax-related topics. If you, for example, have the trade license and you're moving out of the Czech Republic, so what you need to do in regards to the trade license, because those are very important topics and sometimes can lead to very big problems if you don't stick to some rules. So let's let's start with that. Guys, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask and I will either answer them right away during the live stream or I will do it at the end of the live stream. Depends on if they are related to the topic or not. Okay, so first thing, uh, if you're moving out of the Czech Republic, what you need to do visa-wise related to your visa or residence permit. This depends on when your visa or residence permit expires. If you are moving out, say, in January and your visa expires in January or February or March or something, uh, you don't really need to do anything. It will just expire and that's, that's it. If you're talking about the visa. Uh, but if your visa or residence permit expires say four months from now, three months from now, five months, half a year, or you just got a new one and you still have like two years of validity and you are you decided to move uh, out of the Czech Republic, you should definitely inform the ministry about that so they will cancel your visa or your residence permit. And in case you have a residence permit, you should also return the, the physical card back to the Ministry of the Interior because any residence permit card either if it's the biometric card or if it's the, the booklet for family members or whatever you have uh, is a property of the Czech Republic. So if you are moving out of the Czech Republic, you need to re return this uh, to the Czech Republic, so to the Ministry of the Interior. Uh, so that's a very important thing. Uh, if you have just a visa sticker in your passport, obviously you don't need to return it. They will not like tear it off your, your passport. But again, if it's if the visa is valid for a um, couple more months, then I would still recommend uh, going to the ministry, reporting that you're moving out and just having it canceled. Of course, if you still want to travel uh, within Schengen and you want to use the visa to travel, that's fine. You can do that. Uh, but keep in mind that if you're leaving, uh, for example, what, I, I will give you one concrete example. If you have a business visa, then in some of the next topics, I will be talking about canceling the trade license because that should be the first step when you're moving out uh, as a business owner in the Czech Republic. So if you if you cancel your trade license, but you keep your business visa, that could potentially be a problem for you when you're moving back here uh, somewhere in the future. So you need to keep this in mind as well. And it's always better if you're moving out and your visa is still active and valid, then go to the ministry, have it canceled, uh, and definitely return the card because it's the property of the Czech Republic. Uh, let's see, I have some questions on YouTube. Hello, Jan, many thanks for the support. So that's not the questions, that's that's the support. So thank you very much, Salas, as well. Uh, thank you for following. Uh, Mahislok, hello, sir. Can you tell me about work visa update for Czech Republic? 
Uh, that's not really related to this topic I'm talking about, so I'll get to it uh, later at the end of the stream, but maybe be a bit more specific. What do you mean about work visa update for the Czech Republic, please? If you can be more specific, I will answer that at the end of the live stream. Okay, now back to the topic. If you're moving to the Czech Republic, we've just discussed what you need to do in regards to your visa or residence permit, but what you should do in regards to your daily life. Because there are also many things you should keep in mind. I will not be talking about the most obvious things like uh, ending your lease agreement, stuff like that. But there are three things I would like to mention specifically because they're important and often they bring some trouble. So first thing would be bank account. You can obviously, you can either keep the check bank account or you can cancel it. Uh, which one you will do depends on your future plans. If there is a chance that you would you would move back to the Czech Republic, then definitely keep it open. You just need to make sure that you report it to the bank and they they adjust the account. Because, for example, uh, many banks offer a free account in case you receive some specific amount of money every month. Or if you don't, if you use the account, like you pay it three times a month by card or stuff like that. If you stop, and that's obviously not a problem if you're living in the Czech Republic, but if you move out and you stop receiving uh, income to your bank account and you stop paying by card, then they would start charging you monthly fees for the account. And if you don't have any money on the bank account because you don't use it, then you could get in trouble with the bank because you would be owing money to the bank and that's never good. <laughs> Uh, so that's definitely important thing. If you want to keep the bank account in the Czech Republic, that's fine. And it might be advisable. I will speak about it in a second. Uh, just make sure that you switch to a free option. So you don't need to pay any monthly fees and you don't got, get any trouble uh, with the bank. And another reason to keep the Czech bank account active is, especially if you are a freelancer, for example, if you were here as a freelancer, you had the trade license, the Givno, then you will still need to do taxes. That will be the last topic I'll be talking about today. And you might need to pay some extra taxes like the social security or the income tax or healthcare after the, the, the tax return. So if you already cancel your check bank account, you might have trouble transferring those fees to the authorities. If you keep the check bank account, it's easy. You will just transfer it from a check bank account to a check bank account. And that's easy. So those, those would be reasons to keep the bank account. But if you know that you will never be, or like most likely you will never be moving back to the Czech Republic, you have no debts against the government, you're sure that you will not be paying anything uh, to anyone from a Czech bank account, then just better cancel it because it's usually not possible to do it. Maybe canceling is possible to do online, but if you need to do something with the bank where they need your signature or something, then that would be pretty complicated. And doing it from like the US or India or from wherever you are from, uh, that would be pretty complicated. We have, we had a case like that. I remember, I don't know from the, from where the guy was, but he was even EU, I believe he was like Swiss or something, but he moved out of the Czech Republic and we were, he asked us to do something with his bank account to change the phone number from the Czech one to his foreign bank, uh, phone number. And it was such a big problem. We had to do like a notarized power of attorney at the Czech embassy in that country. And it was very complicated. So if you're sure that you will be leaving for good and you don't need the bank account for anything, cancel it. But on the other hand, if you know that you still might need to pay something, it's better to keep it. Maybe just discuss with your bank uh, how to close it from abroad or if someone can have a power of attorney, for example, and close it on your behalf. So that was a bank account. And then two things which are related and where many people have problems. We've seen this many times, guys. Really be careful about that because we've seen people getting into debt, uh, being hunted by uh, debt collectors, uh, all this. And when they come back to the Czech Republic, it just like started uh, pouring their way. Uh, and that's internet and phone bills. If you set up the internet uh, connection and you pay on monthly basis and the same with your uh, phone bills, then definitely make sure that you discuss this with them enough in advance. Because what often happens is that you go to the branch, say Vodafone, and you tell them, hey, uh, I would like to cancel this because I'm moving out of the Czech Republic. They tell you, okay, this is good. We've canceled it. You will just need to pay this amount, blah, blah, blah. And thank you, bye. So you you do this and you, you think that everything is fine. But then uh, 
something is usually not really right because you need to pay some extra for keeping the modem or something. The person at the branch, when you were canceling it, canceling the subscription, didn't tell you because they either didn't know or just, I don't know. Uh, and then you might have some debts against these companies. And that's almost the same problem as having a debt against a bank. Because banks are the, the, the worst. That's everywhere in the world. Like if you have a smallest debt against the bank, that's like the end, <laughs> end station. Uh, you will get into all the registers and you will never get a loan and everything. But the same kind of works with, for some reason, I don't know why, but for some reason, the same power is in hands of phone operators and internet operators in the Czech Republic. So if you owe them something and you're no longer in the Czech Republic, they have no way to contact you. Uh, they will give this, whatever you owe them, even if it's like 100 crowns, they will give it to debt collectors. And from 100 crowns, the debt will increase to 5,000 crowns because of the, the fees of the debt collectors. And it will keep increasing for every month and every year you don't live here. <laughs> Uh, so this, if you eventually come back to the Czech Republic, this could be a big problem for you. Even if you had like 100 crowns debt against the internet provider or phone provider, then it might be like tens of thousands of crowns now. Plus you would most likely be in some registers of debt, debt debtors, debtors, whatever, like the people who own money to someone. And you might, you might have even difficult time to, uh, to get a visa approved. Mary, Happy New Year, Jan. Uh, thank you very much as well. Uh, yeah, I'm back here. Uh, thank you very much as well. Happy New Year to you as well. Enjoy tomorrow and all the best to the new one. Uh, then we have two more questions on YouTube. Uh, Bhuvanesh Kumar, how long can we keep the unused bank account? I don't think there is any rule for that. It would be, it would depend on the particular bank. If they have some internal rules that if you don't receive money for this amount of time, they will cancel it. They would cancel it based on these rules. But I'm not aware of any like general rule that if you don't use a bank account for one year, for example, that uh, the, the, the bank account will be closed or canceled. This works with a SIM card. If you have a top up SIM card from a check operator, so you, you put credit on that whenever you need it. So you don't have the monthly subscription. I believe that you, if you don't use the, or if you don't top up the credit uh, for six months, they will automatically cancel your number and they will give it to someone else. So that works for, for phone operators, but I don't think banks have anything like that. And we have a client who's been having a check bank account. She lives somewhere. She's Russian. She lives in, I don't know, somewhere far away, like Sri, Sri Lanka or somewhere now teaching English. And she still has a check bank account and it's been a couple of years. Uh, so I guess there is no, no rule like that. Uh, hopefully that was good enough answer. And Mahis Lok, I know this is not topic today. I'm from India. I'm waiting for Czech Republic work visa. If you have any update, Czech Republic work visa, please tell me. Thank you. Okay. So I'll get to it, uh, at the end of the live stream. So please stay with me and let's go now through the, to the three, third topic, which is tax related things you should do when you're leaving the Czech Republic. So we've, we've went through visa related topics. If you should cancel your visa or return the card or just do nothing. Uh, we went through daily life topics. So canceling the internet provider, phone call, uh, phone provider and your bank account. And now the third topic is related to your taxes. Because if you are, a f this is especially important for people with trade license. If you are self-employed in the Czech Republic, and your trade license was open for whatever part of the year. So let's say you left on the 2nd of January, but your trade license was still active on the 1st of January because you canceled it on the 2nd, uh, right when you were leaving to the airport. Then you still need to do a tax return for that year. So for if you left uh, 2nd of January, uh, 2022, you will need to do a tax return for 2022 in March 2023. And many people, we for our clients of Move to Prague, we tell it to everyone, hey, if you're leaving, that's great, but remember that you need to do taxes, uh, subscribe to our newsletter, we will remind you. Some people do, some people don't, and then that can be a pretty big problem because that's your legal duty. If you had a trade license and if you were paying the social security, healthcare, all this, you need to do your tax return. You need to do the tax 
reports to the social security and to the healthcare provider. Uh, and if you don't do that, uh, it can get you into kind of a big trouble. Uh, we've seen this many times as well that people, for example, left, forgot to uh, cancel the social security, forgot to do the tax return. And then they came back a couple of years later and they were applying for the visas. And this was a problem for that because the ministry, when you're applying for a new visa and you, the ministry sees that you already lived in the Czech Republic before, then they will definitely check if you didn't have any problems there. And if they find out that you had problems, that you, for example, didn't do the tax return or you didn't do the, the report for the social security or healthcare, then that would be a problem and it could even lead to the denial of your visa. So be careful about that. So what you need to do if you're a freelancer and you live in the Czech Republic, if you're from the EU, if you're a freelancer from the EU, then basically the only thing you should do is to go to the trade license office and tell them that you want to cancel the trade license or that you want to pause it. Because if you know, for example, that you will be coming back in six months or one year, you can also just pause the trade license for the specific amount of time. Or you can, uh, and it will automatically reactivate after the six months or one year or whatever period you tell them. Uh, or you can cancel it completely. That means that if you ever come back to the Czech Republic, you will need to go through the, uh, to the trade license process completely from the beginning. But it's safer to do it this way and cancel it completely and then had to reactivate it, then to just pause it for some specific amount of time. Then you decide not to come, but your trade license will reactivate automatically and you will not even know about that. So it's, it's definitely better to cancel it if you are not exactly sure when you would be coming. If there is a chance that you're coming, you can also just pause it for indefinite period, indefinite period basically until the until the same day of 2099. So today you could uh, pause your trade license until the 30th of December 20, uh, 2099, <laughs> which most likely we will not need the trade license anymore. Uh, okay, so that would be the trade license, either cancel it or pause it, but make sure you do that. Because uh, if you don't, uh, all the authorities will still uh, expect payments from you, tax returns, all this, and you could get into big trouble if you, if, you, you don't do what they expect you to do. And related to that, you should also inform all the other authorities, not just the trade license office, but the social security, healthcare, and income tax office. Uh, you should bring them the, the canceled or paused trade license and tell them, hey, I'm leaving. I canceled my trade license. I paused my trade license. Uh, don't expect any more payments from you. Because if you don't do that, in theory, the trade license office should let them know automatically but they don't do that. Uh, sometimes they do, most likely they don't, uh, or in most cases don't, they don't. So it could also lead to uh, you having some debts against the government, even though you, you haven't been living here and you, in your opinion, did everything you could. Uh, so it's definitely best to first cancel the trade license, they then take the canceled trade license to the social security, healthcare and tax office and report that you canceled it and ask them to cancel your subscriptions with them as well so you don't have to pay the monthly payments. Just keep in mind that you will still need to pay for the particular month. So if you ended your trade license, even on the 1st of January, you still need to pay for January because even if you had one day of the trade license active that particular month, you still need to pay at least the minimum uh, monthly fees. So just keep this in mind. And one and the most important thing is that you still need to do the tax return. So if your trade license was active, even like, again, like three days in January. So if you don't manage to cancel the trade license this year, but you cancel it 3rd of January, you will still most likely need to do your tax return for 2022 in March 2023, which will be like one and a half years after you, you moved out of the Czech Republic. So many people forget about it. But it's very important because you, if you don't do that, uh, you're violating the law and you can get some fines and you can and those fines will be increasing uh, because of like late payment fees and, uh, and the interest and all this. So if you ever come back to the Czech Republic 10 years later, you might like find out that you have like uh, many tens of thousands of, of crowns of a debt against the government just because you didn't submit your tax return and social security and healthcare report because there are pretty big fines for not doing that okay so that was uh, generally uh, what you should do when you're moving out of the czech republic i hope that all of you watching me will be staying <laughs> uh, 
uh, or moving here uh, instead of leaving. But if you're leaving, which happens, that's life. Uh, we had one client who didn't really like Prague. He said like it was depressing and he moved back to Finland. Uh, which is kind of very strange if you compare Finland and the Czech Republic, which one is more depressing. But uh, that's how it is. Uh, so if you're moving out of the Czech Republic, hopefully this was helpful. And please feel free to ask questions. Uh, I will now reply to or answer the questions uh, Mahi Slok had uh, on, uh, on YouTube. So I know this is not topic today. I'm from India. I'm waiting for Czech Republic work visa. If you have any update, Czech Republic work visa, please uh, tell me. Thank you. Uh, Mahi, if you applied for your visa or residence permit, if it's work related, then it was most likely an employee card or a blue card. Uh, and if you applied already at the Czech embassy, then you just need to wait. Uh, the official approval time for most types of visas are 60 to 90 days. And if the ministry is still, and the decision is not made by the embassy, okay, the embassy just takes your documents and physically ships them to the Czech Republic, to the Ministry of the Interior, uh, and they make the decision. So the, the decision is not made at the embassy. And often, uh, if you submit your application in India, that can take many, even weeks, to get the documents physically delivered to the Czech Republic. So if you applied, say, one month ago, we still had some... Actually, I had like a couple questions about that yesterday or two days ago on my uh, Facebook chat. Uh, some people asked me that, hey, uh, my application number still shows because my previous live stream was about application numbers and how to check the status of your application. Uh, so people started doing that and they saw that their application number, which they got from the embassy, is still showing as unknown or not, not found, which can mean that the ministry has not started working on your case yet, which happens if you if you submit the application uh in the Czech Republic then the the application number is uh, assigned to you right away and they kind of start working on that right away not really but kind of at least in the system it's visible but if you apply through a Czech embassy the Czech embassy first needs to collect the documents they don't mail all the documents separately so they wait for a couple applications to pile up then they take the documents and ship them to the Czech Republic to the Ministry of the Interior so there can be delay already of like a week or two. Then the Ministry of the Interior, the, the, when, whenever they receive the post, they need to sort it to the different like uh, departments. And then in that particular department, the, 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 whoever, like the, the manager of the department needs to assign that particular case to some person. And that person needs to start working on that case. So it can take many weeks in, in many cases. So if you haven't, received any reply uh, from the embassy about the status of your application for a month or even two months doesn't mean anything because it's possible that the ministry maybe haven't even started working on, on your case or they have just started but they haven't done much. So uh, yeah, but if, if it's been longer than the, the official deadline, so then officially 60 to 90 days, uh, you can ask the ministry, you can either send a complaint or just politely ask them about the status of your application. But that needs to be done either in person or via physical letter, not like email or something. Uh, so we usually do it for our clients if we have a power of attorney. If we don't have a power of attorney, then we would need to get it first. And then we can physically go to the ministry and ask about the status of your application. So if, you, if you're interested in this, let me know. I'll be, I'll be happy to explain more about the service and how it works and how much it costs. Uh, Mahi, but uh, if you are still within the legal deadline, so 60 to 90 days for most visa types or residence permit types, just wait. Makes no sense to, it definitely makes no sense to ask the embassy because they, they don't know anything. They are not making the decision. So they rely on the information they receive from the Ministry of the Interior. And they usually don't receive anything unless the ministry denied the application, approved the application, or they need some additional documents from you. So it makes no sense to ask the embassy. And uh, asking the ministry, if you ask them before they reach the legal deadline, they could even see that as, uh, as a harassment, that you, you're trying to influence the, the decision-making process, and they could even like get, get angry at you. So it's definitely 
best to just wait and whenever you hear from them you hear from them unfortunately that's like that uh it and it can often take a very long time to get your applications approved but uh, the only advice i have for that just be patient and wait and yeah because it if you've been waiting for some time it doesn't mean that it's gonna be approved it doesn't mean that it's gonna be denied it doesn't mean anything. It just means that the ministry is lazy or they are not working on that case. Or it might mean that there is some problem and they will be denying the application, but it might be also a sign that they're close to making the decision and they will be approving the, the application soon. So unfortunately, there is not much you can do. Okay, guys, thank you very much. This was the official part. If you have still some questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, otherwise, uh, I wish you all a uh, happy New Year's Eve and great start of the new year. And we'll be looking forward to seeing you again on Monday, the 3rd. As you know, for those of you who follow me, you know that I do these live streams every Monday and Thursday regularly. So I did it before Christmas. I do it now before the New Year's Eve. And I will start doing it like the first working day uh, in January. And I will continue like that. Uh, Diego, Andres Acosta, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe tell me how was 2021 for you? Uh, guys, if you're watching me, tell me like how you how you see 2021. Because for me, it was, on one hand, it was the most difficult year I've ever had. On the other hand, it was also the most enlightening uh, year I've ever had. So I'm I'm happy for 2021, whatever was happening. Uh, I'm happy for that. So, guys, let me know how was your 2021. Uh, and if you are silent, crazy one, Diego. Yeah, I bet. Uh, yeah, if you if you want to share some specific story or some some specific reason, please, I'll be happy to uh, to hear that. Uh, if not, of course, obviously, I don't want to like. <laughs> interfere with your personal life or something but uh, i'm just interested about like people who follow me and and your lives uh so mahi mahi slog had sent some message and then deleted that so i guess i either answered that or it was something like go fuck yourself Jan, i hate you and now she or he changed his mind uh uh, uh, uh but let's see Geo Johnny, thank you for joining. We are basically all done with the official part. But if you if you want to share how was your 2021, or if you have any questions related to anything uh, moving out of the Czech Republic or anything else, then feel free to ask. Uh, also, happy New Year, uh, New Year, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, reply for me, sir. It was useful for me. Happy New Year, sir. Stay home. Stay safe. Take care, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to, that's why, why I do this. You know, obviously we have the company called Move to Prague, which is, uh, of course, I, I say the best relocation and immigration agency in the Czech Republic because it's our child with Daria. We established the company 11 years ago and it's like we've been growing and taking care of expats of all nationalities moving to the Czech Republic and living here. Uh, so that's, uh, that's our child. Uh, but I also personally, uh, not only through the company, but personally also like to to help people and share my knowledge and experience. And if whatever I say or some piece of the information helps you in some some way, I'm happy to hear that. Uh, as for staying staying home, meh, I don't think I'll I'll do it much. We have a lot to do tomorrow, even though it's not like work related, but we'll we'll have a lot to do. Uh, stay safe. I will. That's for sure. And take care. Yes, I've been taking care. I've been taking care of myself uh, very well, I believe. So I'll keep doing that as well. Uh, thank you very much for the wishes. Uh, happy New Year to you as well, Ndao. Uh, happy New Year to you, Mahi, uh, as well. Thank you very much, guys, for joining, for following me. If you don't follow me on TikTok uh, or on Instagram or YouTube or Facebook, if you're not part of my Facebook group, uh, Expats in CZE Help and Support Group please join because uh, in on all the different platforms i share a slightly different content it's all related to moving to the czech republic living here immigration related matters housing health insurance all this but obviously the flat platforms are slightly different so i i use them in a different way 
on YouTube, I usually have these uh, longer live streams and deeper in the topic. Uh, on TikTok, I have very short video with videos with condensed information. I share a new video about uh, like every day, basically. Uh, Instagram, eh, I kind of don't like Instagram. I don't know how to, what to do there. Uh, so that's not that best, but you can still join me there. And Facebook group, uh, that's probably the best because uh, you can ask your questions there and I will help, I will answer them or the community will, will help you as well. They will share their knowledge, knowledge and experience. Uh, I also post these videos there, like recordings, and I go often live there. So you can also ask me questions there. So thank you very much. Now, thank you very much. Uh, and see you next year, guys. Thank you and bye-bye.